we didn't get a video yesterday, we're doing a Cybernet ZX1 for a customer, but we didn't get anywhere with it. So there's a VCO problem, um, and in, the VCO is in a wax build department, ZX1 is very similar to this, and it's the same customer. So this is, we've recently done the Midland Ready Rescue, we did my own one, because I wanted to do a field test, which we did. This has come with a homemade uh, adapter. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure how screen this is, so um, I'll probably just we will test that. But um, anybody with these with aerial adapters are far better off getting the um, the SO239. Even if you've got to bring one in from Canada for eight pounds or something, you know it's worth uh, it's worth getting the NC forgotten what it's called adapter which is the SO239 and it's a longer um, pin because it'll also go in Motorola connectors. Motorola connectors, aerial connectors, are what were found on traditional car radios so it fits both. This has come with a, a non-fused power lead. To me that's a bit scary because even I can get things the wrong way around and it affords the radio no protection whatsoever. Um, these aren't uh, Foreman Miss plugs, these are Wonder plugs. So they're a uh, a bygone era thing. So it plug, plugs in the top of these, does it? I'm going to make sure the power supply is really current limited. take some of the current limiting off. We'll plug that into the test set and we'll put that on picture in picture. Um, I ought to get a piece of paper and then we can write down some before and after. Ceramic trimming tool on the floor. Ceramic tool on ceramic floor. And this 77810 was made May 1982. So, how many volts is it? I'll have to look at the instruction leaflet. We've got a dodgy circuit diagram with no clarity. Oh, here we are. I've got it from the previous session. It is 12 volts. So we'll set the power supply to 12.4. Well, it's 12.6, so that'll do. So I'm doing this at 12.6 volts. So we're on channel 20. The radio is on. It would be if it did anything. It's transmitting and it's doing 3 watts. Deviation. Wallow. So 
So just do the frequency. I'll put and it should be twenty seven seven nine one two five is twenty seven seven nine one two eight. Absolutely spot on. It's always best to be very slightly high because they drop with age. So we've got no receive. Oh, we have. It's very quiet. In fact, there is receive. And the reason we couldn't hear it is it was on a different channel. On the, on the signal generator was on an S9 equivalent and it was on another channel like 31 and the radio suffers from adjacent channel um, interference so much that it actually blocked the receiver from doing anything on channel 20 but of course it's an emergency set it's not intended to be used as a base station in the middle of a of a housing estate with CBs every other house so that's not really an issue So we can't tell you what the sign on is yet. We'll open it up and we'll get our equipment connected to it. Okay, so we've now got it hooked up to the test set. And we'll see what that sign on is reading. So, at the moment, we've got 1.35 microvolts for 12 dB. That's, that's around about 10. We've got 1.3 uh, for 20 if it does it. It does. Not all radios do. Twenty, it is two point six microvolts. So we may be able to improve that. I'm going to do an interesting experiment, or interesting to me. We're going to go back to twelve dB. And we'll come. We, what we'll now do is connect the customers. whether he's made it, whether somebody else has made it, but the homemade lead, and just see whether there's a difference in performance on transmit and receive. I mean, really, that should be a cable-mounted socket rather than a, a chassis one which is taped on. There is a difference. It is 1.5 microvolts with the adapter. I'll put adapter. It's 1.5 microvolts, so slightly deafer. And on transmit, just go to that camera. It was 3 watts. We're still in the right range. It's 2.7 watts. a little loss in in that um, homemade cable so we'll carry on our tune-up with the commercially available adapter
Right, so we'll start with the tune up. I've actually got this upside down to the way we actually want it. Opening it up has pulled the wire off the electric condenser microphone. Many years ago, when I was service manager at Nottingham Radio, the Maxon SL70 business radio hand portable came out and we were asked to beta test an advanced production uh, pre-production model and when you open the lid of the radio the leads were so short that it, although it was all on little tiny connectors being this is a really small business radio hand portable you got it like that, and then you had to get tweezers, not play out, and try and get these tiny connectors in. I think one was even a ribbon connector. And I said, well, the serviceability is just not there. If it was, if there was another half inch of of wire, we could open this up without damaging anything. And they actually stopped production. They halted production and extended that wire by half an inch so sometimes when you're doing beta testing you can you can actually have some real valid input and this is where we could have just done with another half inch of wire on that white one because the others are okay and I, I don't think I can dress this any any better I've had a little tug there anyway we'll worry about that So, we will whip through the tuning. So, going into transmit, maximum, maximum, maximum. Better sit, this, sit, switch the soldering iron on, and we'll do the others. I'll do transmit deviation absolutely last in view of that. Now, one of the things I like about this version, uh, the, the um, 77810, is it doesn't have a digital display. So some people might hate that, but I like it because it draws less current. It's drawing 80 milliamps. That's it. Something with an LED display would probably be drawing... Um, 254 to 400 milliamps and um, you know if you're in a situation with limited battery power um, this is going to win and not all these you can turn the display off Change ranges. Okay, so we brought that up to three and a half watts. And we'll show that on the Zitagi meter, which is which is about a good ten percent fast and also shows harmonics. And he's just he's doing over four watts on the Zitagi meter. 
said a million times the Marconi instrument he's only looking at what's on 27 megs well now tell a lie the range it's set to is 24 to 33 so it's only looking there so your second harmonic on 54 megs it would ignore I don't need to look at those it's not being messed with um, you know it's an emergency set that's fine so th that's satisfactory so we'll now not go any further we don't need to set the frequency it's spot on if we needed to set the frequency let's just see where it is chances are it's CT1 let's fiddle with it just in case so I'll just go over to camera 2 it is it is because you know there's always a danger that it doesn't have one VCO but it in fact has VCO and you can have a transmit and a receive VCO and often the transmit one can be a trimmer uh, in this case it's the it is definitely the um, crystal oscillator and the crystal is there but it's quite away from there, so I, I just put that possibility that it may be VCO, but it isn't. It's what we thought. It's frequency. Right, so let's look at that receiver, because it wasn't brilliant. So I've now got, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll start by putting 100 microvolts on the signal generator and we'll just check the detector with the oscilloscope. I'll just put a bit more volume on. So we've got an S9 equivalent signal of 100 microvolts. The detector is this coil. It was actually spot on. So turn the volume down. Because it does annoy some people and some people's dogs. We just we only need as much as the AGC on the cyanide meter can um, cope with. So we'll set it about there, about 4 dB, and let's see whether we can get some improvement. We've had 0 0.79 microvolts on one of these for 12 dBs in the past, so the fact that this is doing 1.35, I'm sure we can improve. That's going to be IF. Yeah, huge improvement. Wow. Just put that there in case it's... Uh, check we've got that right and then we'll go back to the first one so I've said before at the factory they're gonna just go twiddle 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 until it reaches a line on the meter and they're not um, 
engineers, they assembly workers, and they're told twiddle, twiddle, twiddle until you get to a line on a meter. And once they've done that, it's going to go on the conveyor belt, and, and that'll be the next stage done. We can go backwards and forwards and know there is some interactivity between these adjustments. Because if I spend two minutes on it, it makes no difference. In a factory situation, they may be expected to do it in, in 20 seconds. So, um, let's see what we've now got for a sign out. So our 12 dB sign out is now 0.97. Our 10 dB is 0.9 and our 20 dB changes scales is 1.8. So still not fantastic figures, and they're not as good as the sample we've once had, but they, <laughs> they're much better than it's come in doing, and very usable. So, let's have a look what it's supposed to do, because half of this is it's supposed to be 0 0.7 microvolts for 20 dB. Well, of course it isn't. That was a our wish. So we'll, we'll do the squelch, which is the preset just lurking down there. So we're going to set the radio, well, it can stay where it is, and we'll advance the squelch to full. So I'm now going to adjust the attenuator control. I'll put this on the attenuator, and then you can see me doing this. So at the moment, we've got 10 microvolts, 30 microvolts. And at 100 microvolts, at full squelch, I want the radio to open up. And it doesn't. So that's a bit of a tight squelch. So we'll adjust the preset so that it just comes in. There we go. I'll drop this now back, and the squelch has come in. We'll go back to S9, and the radio's working. So now we'll park the signal generator at 0 0.3 microvolts and switch it off. So it's now on standby. Turn the squelch down, set to threshold. Switch the signal generator on. That little peep is just the, the um, signal generator going to the level I've told it to go to. So we're now going to advance this. I'll put it on the 1 microvolt range and the squelch has come in. So with the fine adjustment, we'll see where that squelch is working. So, it comes in at 0 0.8 of a microvolt, and it drops off at 0 0.7 of a microvolt. And that difference is what they call hysteresis. Okay. That's not a lady going into hospital when she's got poorly innards. My late mother had that uh, problem, and she was always telling me the history of her ectomy. Mind you, I was ten and a half pounds when I was born in 1962, and I don't think that did her any good whatsoever. And uh, uh, somebody commented on my chubby hands. Well, guess what? When you're 18 and a half stone, you got chubby hands. Right, um, we're done. It's lovely. Greatly improved. I'm looking forward to Scratchy Corner on this. I know you've seen me do these before, but these are genuine repairs that come in, and it's nice for us to see them together. Uh, right. Um, bu -bu -bu -bum. We can disconnect the Synad meter. So I'll just pause the video, and I'll just solder that back on. Okay, with that soldered back on, we'll go over to camera one and we'll do the deviation. So I'll get the little oscillator out we use, which is a Korg chromatic instrument tuner, not a guitar tuner, because a guitar only has six strings. And this is set for A, mi a minus, isn't it? For 400 and th um, to get one kilohertz frequency on this, we have it set 
to B flat octave five on at 439 hertz equaling A. So for those of you who know about music, that's how we generate cheaply, relatively cheaply. Couldn't make a, an oscillator myself for what those cost. Perhaps a hobbyist could. So we'll tune up that and the deviation is there somewhere. I have to change the glasses, can't see it. So let's just try it there. Wallow. Wanted. Wallow. Yep, that's it, 2.2 .2 with absolute max of 2.5. I did crack that, so good. Right, there we are. We can put it back together. That's a nice radio. So we've got another half watt out of it. I'll ask the customer if he wants us to put an inline fuse holder on this for a one ninety nine cost. Oh, it's one seventy nine plus twenty two pence. It's more than that, isn't it? It's two pounds and. Um, Two pounds and a penny, isn't it? That gone are the days when they were pence. We'll just put these knobs on in the right place. There we go. Wallow. Okay, so we'll put it on the aerial. And we'll see whether at half past ten in the morning on a Wednesday, where there's any good bad buddies out there. Talking about people being bad buddies, I dropped an elderly friend of mine off for a weekend with her niece, I think it was. And this friend of mine, she's 90. I sometimes do shopping for her on a Wednesday. That's why I'm here today on a Wednesday, because I'm not doing her shopping today. And uh, I went to York. I dropped her off. And then I drove back. I thought, well, I'll put the CB on. I'll go back a couple of years, maybe even more. And I thought, oh, I'll just see what's on 19. You know, listen to the lorry drivers as they down, drive the 130 miles back to Lincolnshire. And there was a bloke on 19, pretty, you know, really loud and clear, S9. I couldn't hear who he was talking to. And then, so this is York. And I, he was still talking on 19 as I got to Doncaster. And that was when he was at his loudest. And, and during this distance, I started to be able to hear who he was talking to. And then as I drove down the A1, I got to what's equivalent of Clumber Park in Nottinghamshire and he just started to drop out of range and when I got to Newark I could no longer hear him I don't think he was on 4 watts do you so that's an example of a bad buddy let's see if there's any out there 1 9 Roger Well, there's life on channel 19, and he's going to do something with a piece of chicken wire in his face or something. Right, okay. Well, there we have it. We have the Midland Ready Rescue customer set 77810 from May 1982, and uh, it 
it's coming working and uh, it's now working better. Thank you for watching.